All right, let's look at this one. We've got a toggle clamp subjected to a force of 10 newtons at the handle. It's asking what's the force, the clamping force right here at E. All right, so my first instinct for these problems is to look at the whole free body diagram and look at that and write those equations, equilibrium equations. So, uh, you know, the more complicated it looks, don't, don't be um, alarmed, uh, but it, it would kind of look like this right here. Um, I like to draw it kind of as a solid object. And then what forces are acting on it? We've got the normal force right here at E. Um, there, there is a pin at B, but I'm kind of keeping it together. Uh, and so that pin at B would be internal because I'm, I'm drawing this kind of as a solid object. All right. But here at A, there's a pin. So this would be AY and AX. And there at CD, do you see that? We call it a weightless link or it's pinned and pinned at both sides. It's a two force member. And so we've got the force at CD. Instead of drawing a CX and a CY, I'll draw the force at CD at this 60 degree angle. All right, that's a good first step. I could, yes, I could write my equilibrium equations and sum the forces in X equals zero. I could sum the forces in Y equals zero, sum the moments in zero, and those equations would hold. They would be true. I might could solve for one or two, but do you see that there are four unknowns, right? And I only have three equations. So anytime I s see something that has four or five unknowns, I, I tend to try something else first. Now, there are some cases where we can't do anything else. We've got to start there. But I like to start where there are only three unknowns because I've got three equations for everything. So if I look here, is there kind of an object, a, a member of this that only has three unknowns? How about this handle? Right. Oh, and I forgot this. Sorry, I forgot this 10 Newton force here, but I know that. How about this handle right here? What if I only look at the handle? If I only look at the handle, then well, let's look at it. So let me kind of, maybe I'll come back to this one. But let me only look at the handle and draw the free body diagram right here. I've got a BX and a BY. I haven't drawn them before, so I can draw them any direction that you that I want. I tend to like to guess always in the positive directions. Um, I've got force F C D here acting at 60 degrees, and then I know 10 newtons. And so there are only three unknown forces. I think I can probably solve for these three unknown forces. All right. So if I was to draw this as a free body diagram, I would draw my axes. I would draw these dimensions. The dimensions are A, and I don't think we're given A, but we'll see if if that 1.5A right there. This is A by 2 to A by 2. I kind of drew, drew all over this. This is A by 2 to that, and then another A by 2 to that. Okay, that kind of looks ugly, but let's let's see what we've got. So I'm looking at the handle, B, C, F, I'll call it. Uh, and I can sum the forces in the X direction. I've got B, X minus, let's see, this uh, cosine 60 component would be in the X direction. And that's it. Those are the only forces in the X direction, so set those equal to zero. <clears throat> Two unknowns, so let me jump to my next equation. Sum the forces in Y. BY, I drew it up. Uh, FCD, sine 60, I drew it up. And then down 10 equals 0. Still, two unknowns. Probably should have started with the summing the moments. So let me sum the moments. I think summing the moments about B makes the most sense because then BX and BY go straight through it. Don't contribute to the moment. Uh, this, let's see, has two components. The sine 60 component, so FCD sine 60, its moment arm is A by 2, but the FCD, oh, would that be positive or negative? That would be counterclockwise, so that would be positive. And then the FCD cosine 60 would be that component, 
or that component down here, but it's really, oops, it's really acting right here. Uh, that would be a by two, and that would be negative, correct? And then this 10 Newton force is acting 2a away, creating a clockwise, so that would be negative, equals zero. And so because it equals zero, I can divide this a, whoops, I can divide this a to the other side of the equation, or you can just set a to be one, you know, whatever you want it to, to be. So that you can solve for FCD. So here I've got FCD is equal to, what have we got? 109. It came out positive, so that means I guessed correctly. Uh, go back and plug in 109 right here, and I would get BX is, let's see here. I would get BX is 54.6 positive, and I would get BY is all right, so I, I get by of negative 48.6. What does that mean? That means by is 84, yes, 84.6. That means by is 84.6, and it is not pointed up. It is pointed down on the handle, on this figure. All right, so I went to the handle because there were three unknowns, and I knew I had three equations so I could solve for it. All right. I didn't look at the whole free body diagram. Also, I could have kind of looked at, at this number, but it would have had, um, it would have had two, two, four, five unknowns, um, and so, so that's why I started at the handle. All right. Now that I've solved for this bx and by, now I, I think I can go now to this member and probably solve for what I'm looking for, solving for the force at E. So let me look at this member as if it was a solid object. Now that I know BX and BY, I don't know AX and AY, and I don't know E, but those are my three unknowns. So let me draw the free body diagram of this. I'll just make it very simple. It looks ugly, but I've got something right there. I've got normal force at C. I've got a BX and a BY that I've already solved for, and I've got to make sure this is equal or opposite for what the handle feels. The handle felt a down of 84.6, so now I'm feeling an up of 84.6 newtons. The handle felt a BX to the right, 54.6. I want a BX to the left of 54.6. This equal and opposite, this is why I don't want you to, to box in BX and draw it uh, to the right because, yes, it is to the right for this one. It's to the left for the other one. I want you to box in your values and then have them drawn correctly on the free body diagram. All right. So I'm looking for these and then making sure they're drawn correctly on both free body diagrams. All right, then I've got an AY that I don't know, an AX that I don't know, and that's it. There's something happening here, but I'm keeping it together, so it's internal. One feels equal and opposite what the other one feels. So there's my free body diagram. If I really just want to solve for NC, then I could sum the moments about A. AX goes straight through it. Oh, AY goes straight through it. Also, this 84.6 goes straight through it. The 54.6 newtons is... A distance of a if we look at our free body diagram I didn't do a good job drawing this a by 2 and a by 2 so it is a distance of a and this is 1.5 a all right a distance of a positive about a and then in C is a distance of 1.5 a 1.5 a right here this is a right here and that would be oops, about point A. That would be negative. Set that equal to zero. Luckily, my A's will, will divide out the other side of the equation. NC would be, and I'm calling it C. I think it's E, sorry. The normal force at E
Yes, this normal force at E, 36.4 newtons. Normal force at E, 36.4 newtons. So pushing down on that handle, only 10 newtons gives it a clamping force of 36.4 newtons. And we got that by looking at the free body diagram of the handle and then the free body diagram of this uh, other member right here. All right? I didn't look at and now now I actually could maybe go back to the whole free body diagram and make sure that it's still the sum of the forces should still equal 0. The sum of the force in x, sum of the force in y, and the sum of the moments of the whole free body diagram should still equal 0. So I could go back there to double check some of my work, double check some of my answers. All right. So it's maybe been a kind of a more complicated figure, but draw your simple simple shapes as your free body diagrams so that we can solve what's happening at C and what's happening at B so then we can solve for what's happening at E which is what it what it really asks for this is probably the only thing I should really box in right here normal force at E 36.4 newtons